Madman's back with another Warframe tutorial video. Today, we're going to be talking about dojos. Now, dojos, as it were, are one of the more interesting elements of play in terms of what you can do with them and how they work. And by comparison, for those of you who are familiar with the MMO world, this regulates a guild. Um, however, the guild concept in this is uh, extremely different as it offers a very unique spin on things. So as we do this video, we're gonna kinda just take a spin and a stroll around my dojo here on the PlayStation account. Take a second for it to load in, there it goes. Neato. So, dojos, like I said, act as a guild and they house a lot of extras as you can kinda see here. My guild is very simple. But uh, it's got a few different things. Here's an obstacle course. So it houses a lot of extras in terms of decorative, but it's also more than decorative. There's a lot of stuff you could get um, in terms of weapons and whatnot, because they hide a lot of weapons and even frames in some of these various labs here within the dojo. Now, a couple of things to note. Dojo, there, there, there's, there's a lot of stuff that's been throughout the years rele relegated, that's the word, to being not dojo exclusive, but there are still things that are very much dojo exclusive. So we're gonna take a look at some of the rooms and labs you can build. Another thing that you need to know as we uh, get ready on this tour of the dojo, uh, one quick thing to note is that a dojo can be created by anybody, even a party of one as we take a stroll around this dojo here. But if you're playing as a party of one, I gotta ask you, one, what are you doing? Because you could be joining the PlayStation clan here, Dad's in Prison, which was made long before I started creating videos by a friend of mine. Or we also have the Coalition of Mad Men, which is on the PC, or Coalition for short. You can check both of those out, join us. So. The question begs itself, if you're looking at a dojo, what exactly do you, one, need to build, and two, need to know about the dojo specifically? Now, the first thing is that uh, blueprints and sizes of resources needed depend extremely on the size of your clan. So if you are a clan of one, you're gonna have an easier time building rooms than say a clan of 50, potentially, as far as resource numbers go. Those scale based on clan size, which is great. Uh, the second thing is that once you create the dojo, you'll be given a clan key blueprint, which will allow you to create that blueprint or that key at the foundry. And that process takes 24 hours and then you'll be able to enter the dojo. So if you're going to invite people to your dojo, just remember that they'll need a clan key, which does take 24 hours to make. So what rooms would I say you need? But there are a lot of them that can be crafted. The drawback to crafting the dojo is that it cannot really be redone unless you destroy the rooms once they've been built and restart. And that's a gigantic pain in the backside. We all know that. Um, there are a few rooms you should focus on. Now I'm gonna jump to the fast trouble screen here. Those rooms are the Energy, the Chem, Bio, Tenno, Orokin Lab, and then the new Vent Kids Bash Lab. Now I'm gonna break a lot of these labs down in detail so you know specifically what they do, but to build those rooms, you're also gonna need those energy reactors that we passed on the way here. here. So all of the blueprints and all of the rooms require energy, and you have to have X amount of energy in order to build said room. Go down, oh, it's going up. Um, so you gotta make sure you have those energy reactors built before you can actually build out any of the rooms. So let's actually go through and break down what each lab does. I'm still trying to find. So like, see here, I can build out here. I can build any of the stuff that has not already been built. Crimson branch. Uh, oh, that does need to be built actually. Cross connector. I can build another energy lab should I want to. Uh, there's all this stuff you see. There's a bunch of stuff and you see insufficient space. 
what that means is that I have no energy, or I have the energy and the whatnot available, but I don't have the space to build it. So once it hits a certain point, you got to build another tower, like another, um, another floor, or you know, worry about building yourself out. So that's you got to pre-plan a little bit. So you'll need this reactor in order to get your energy. See how mine says energy is 25, 20 available. My capacity is 128 available. So, so, so know that you'll have to build reactors for that. Let's go through these rooms, these, these labs, so that you know what each one does. Um, first off, you're going to have, oops, go back here. First off, you're going to have the energy lab. The energy lab it allows you access to all of these blueprints. Now, we're not going to break them down in detail. Uh, you can kind of Google what energy lab blueprints are, but there's a lot of weapons there. If we go to the chem lab, this is going to be a lot of infested stuff. Um, not as many blueprints in there, but there's still some weapons and stuff that are kind of stuck here with a dojo. Next, we're going to go to the bio lab, which is very similar in the way that it works. It's also infested. Uh, different weapons here, the infested catalyst. Um, glaives, stuff like that, that you can research to replicate and build. Then we have the, -la -la -la, oops, the, the Tino Lab. Give it a second. This one is going to house weapons as well as some frames. You'll see uh, Neja. There's also Vault, uh, Zephyr as well as, uh, where'd you go? There's just Banshee. I was like, I knew there was another one. Uh, Banshee's also in there. There's also some pieces for arc wings that are down here, as you can see. So all of that is in the Tenno Lab. So if, if you were gonna pick one to start with, the Tenno Lab would be the one to start with, in my opinion. Last, we're gonna take a look at the Oricon Lab here. Not a lot of stuff. This is where you get your blueprint for your keys. Uh, the hobble dragon key extinguished dragon key and then the decaying dragon key and the bleeding dragon key those are used for uh some locked rooms in the what used to be the derelicts but we'll get into that in a different video uh the last thing that we're going to take a look at here as far as what you should have or we'll take a look at this vent kids bash lab this is also a new one that actually came in this is where you can get your Relly's pieces. You can get a blueprint from the Bent Kids, but your Relly's pieces can be bought and researched there. And then the last thing we'll take a look at here is the Dry Dock. Now, the Dry Dock is where we get a Railjack. Railjacks we're going to go into in-depth in a completely different video. But as you can see from all of the research alone and materials included, like, take a look at the research here. This is all parts you can research for the Railjack. Now, the thing with this is, it's very, like, very, very time-intensive and very resource-intensive, but it also holds a pretty good return on time and resource investment as far as what you can get back. Now, let's say you're by yourself, right? Let's say you're by yourself and you're thinking, mad man, I don't want to do that. I don't want to invest all that time and effort and resources to potentially, you know, take forever to get there. And, and I would say, good on you. I wouldn't blame you. So what do you do in that instance? Well, in that instance, you would join an existing dojo. Now, existing dojos have their pros and cons with them. Let's go take a look at one of the featured dojos. Uh, featured dojos are a thing that Warframe started some time ago, but they actually have them laid out here. If you click your dojo at the bottom, there are four featured do dojos. Now, these are dojos that have already been created, and I will pick just the one here in the middle because it is uh, probably, like, it's probably going to be the prettiest. You you'll see kind of what an established big dojo can do. Look at this, like this is cool. The Primordial Dynasty. So this is this is what you can do with a dojo if you've ever had any interest in it. Now it's, it's freaking out because there's so much, there's a throne, like a literal throne. Um, 
we'll just some of these. Let's let's take a wander through here uh, because it is a featured dojo. You'll see members of the dojo probably come and go depending on the size. Let's find a room to jump in through. There we go. Uh, here's another just a trophy hall. Like so, this this is a featured dojo. So this is a dojo that has people. Now the thing of this is you gotta re you gotta realize there are pros and cons to joining a already established dojo. The pros, you'd be able to get some of the frames and weapons probably already built and ready to go and researched, which is good. It's gonna save you valuable time and resources, and it allows you to just jump in and get a bunch of stuff right off the rip, which is great. Another good thing is that if you enjoy that kind of play, you're gonna be introduced to a whole new slew of people. So this whole new slew of people is going to potentially welcome you in for other game content that you know you're going to want to do, such as Eidolons and Profit Taker, things like that. You can meet a whole new group of friends by joining an existing dojo. The last thing is that if you you can help build this dojo from the ground up if you get in on the ground floor. Now, some of these already super established dojos are going to be a little difficult to get in to do that, and I understand. But I would very much recommend, if you're thinking about just going that route, jump into, you know, jump into an established JoJo. Not a bad thing. But there are a couple of what I consider major cons. Um, and I say this from experience, not just with this game, but just from experience. One of the major cons and probably the biggest reason I didn't want to join an established dojo myself is because you can get booted without warning. So basically, you could go in and you could put all this time and effort and work in and literally get told, sorry about your luck, we don't need you anymore, and then get removed. So, so is it necessarily likely that's going to happen? I would say probably not, but there is that possibility and I think that's a big one again from experience that has happened to me so that's just something to keep in mind uh, the other con that I would say is that if you end up getting removed you lose everything like so you lose all of that resources and all that time that you invested so it just depends on if you're willing to take that risk because once you get all the blueprints and whatnot from the dojo there's not a lot necessarily to care about per se it sounds weird but it's true um you know the blueprints are really just there unless you have an aesthetically pleasing dojo such as this to come hang out in now that's kind of eventually what i'd like to build my dojo into but for right now we're very simple and simplistic and i'm okay with that so dojos offer a very unique spin to this game and I think they do a lot of good things and a lot of things correctly. But I can see where getting a dojo started and or joining a dojo can be a little scary. So what I'd recommend at, at that rate is, you know, consider what you've seen in this video. Do a little bit of research. Maybe ask around at some of the other dojos. Or if it's you and a couple of buddies, start your own dojo. That's perfectly fine. The more dojos, the better. I think the perks of dojos really outweigh the risk, even if you're by yourself. Um, if you don't have someone to play with, you know, add to the grind of the dojo. So that just gives you something else to work for. Not that Warframe doesn't have enough, but you know, that's the nature of the beast. It's, it's, it, it adds a lot to the game and that's always a good thing in my opinion. So I think even if you're by yourself, Creating a dojo wouldn't be a bad thing, and it gives you tons of new stuff to play with. Um, as I mentioned previously, all of the new Tenno are welcome to join the Coalition on the PC. And here we have Dads in Prison. Like I said, made that a long time ago, almost six years now. So don't, don't judge the name. For the love of God, don't judge it. Um, Hopefully we get to merge them both together once cross-platform becomes a thing. Overall, 
First off, I want to say thank you guys for watching. Second, hit that subscribe button if you're liking what we're doing with these videos. We're at 259 at time of recording. We're slowly creeping up toward that 300 number. And at 500, I think I got a really cool secret and surprise for you guys. So we're, we're striving to hit 500. That'd be great. Um, but yes, until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I am the Madman warning you, or I guess advising you, that the next time you take a trip into the origin system, be sure to reinforce your hall.